What is going on, Governor? It's just cool here, and today we picked up number one in the Mighty Governor for Attila. We're going to unlock him. We're going to start to skill him up. And then we're going to take him for a spin on the battlefield. You can see what his skills look like. And I don't know, we'll start to get a sense of what we think of this commander. If you like Rise of Kingdoms videos where we unlock the latest commanders, you should like and subscribe because we've got almost every single commander unlocked. And we are a sponsored creator with Rise of Kingdoms. Let's get right into it. None other than Attila, ready to summon we scored first place in the Mighty Governor. It was really close. There was some farm killing going on. And by some farm killing, I mean like someone battling their own farm for like 120 million points. No big deal. Whatever. Um, all, all that aside, kingdom rules for uh, kill events aside, um, we did get first place. We did not battle far our own farm. We did not battle... Uh, well, we did battle this person... When they were trying to battle their own farm. Anyways, we intervened a little. <laughs> Let's summon Attila. Here we go. We're unlocking this sweet commander. Boom. Attila the Hun. Dude, the graphics on this commander, by the way, look so good. I feel like it's just night and day compared to the first legendary commanders in Horizon Kingdoms. So as with any legendary commander, you want to max the first skill before you proceed. The exception is probably the two gathering commanders, Cleopatra and Sundok. So let's go in. We've got 170 more sculptures to use here. Let's max this first skill. This first skill is going to elevate normal attack damage and counter attack damage by a solid 30%. Great anti-swarm technology. Um, let's see here. The normal attacks have a 50% chance to reduce enemy attack by at max 50%. So let's do those upgrades now. One, two. Now it's 15 sculptures. And then 15 sculptures again. That leaves us with 120 sculptures. Now the second skill on Attila is all about attacking garrisons. I'm going to tell you something. If we're going to use this commander to attack a garrison, they will be expertise. <laughs> I'm not attacking a garrison probably as a solo march, which means I'm leading a rally. If I'm leading a rally, the commander's very likely going to be expertise. So what I want to do is bring this commander all the way up to four stars so that there's a chance that the skills end up anywhere else except over here on this second skill. So we're going to go in and do that now. And there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. First, you got to get them to level 10. We'll go do that real quick. That's easy. The thing that we need to decide is how we want to use our star sculptures. P.S. Writer of History bundle. We will buy this. In fact, pfft. Let's just get Richard right up on the wall right now. We'll just buy this Writer of History. Five bucks for ten legendary commander sculptures. Yeah, we're we're in on that action. We're definitely in on that action. There we go. All right. Richard, you can go away, buddy. Boom. We've made that purchase. That's something that shows up for an hour after you unlock your legendary commander. We want to star up this commander. Um, there's a bunch of ways that you could go about doing this. Um, one way would be to do something like this and like hope that you crit. And that would basically create a world in which I could slowly apply experience to this commander to level them up. Assuming that's even enough star experience anyways to get them to the next level. We're just going to use regular stars here and apply some experience tomes. And that is totally fine. So here we go. Our regular experience tomes. Hit develop. Boom. Oh, we crit too. That's cool. Okay. So now we need to go in and apply more experience tomes to this commander um, to level them up. Let's go and do that. Taking them all the way up to level 20. Easy peasy. Okay. And from here, we might actually use some special stars. It's sort of tempting. Because we want to get them all the way to four stars. How do I feel here? How do I feel about this? I guess it's fine. We'll just use experience tomes. All right. 
So we snap that off. Boom. Now we need to level them up to 30. So here we go. Let's take them up to 30. Busting out the big guns here, those 50k experience tomes. Uh, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and we'll finish off with the 100 spots. There we go, level 30. We're going to unlock the fourth skill on Attila. So here we go. We're going to use our regular sculptures here. Hopefully we get a couple crits, which would be swell. Nice. And hopefully this tips us over. We'll get real close. Okay. And there we go. Four stars on this brand spanking new commander. Sweet. This is the first opportunity to unlock them. I feel pretty good about this. Now we're going to apply the remaining skills. Where do I hope they go? I mean, it's between the third skill, which is going to be skill damage taken reduction, cavalry march speed bonus, and cavalry attack bonus. You really want to unlock this right away for the base of 20% attack bonus. A part of the reason I'm, I'm like really not excited about working on this skill and maxing it out first, because normally I might take a commander, max the first skill, max the second skill, but this skill has linear progression, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Uh, it doesn't have a non-linear progression of the value you get from having higher levels of skill on it. If it was going like 2, 4, 8, 12, 16, like that progresses much more quickly toward the higher ends of the skill levels. That's not the case here. Um, and the same is sort of true for this skill, linear progression here. And also just for getting the unlock, you get that 20% attack bonus, which is really, really good. So let's hope that we get that. If we get this one, it also seems kind of interesting. There's basically, what is it, a chance that you do um, a medium amount of extra damage and a chance that you do a higher amount of, like, really high amount of extra damage, which seems really good. For the next two turns, 25% chance to increase damage dealt by 50%, and there's a 25% chance to increase damage dealt by 100%. That's pretty good. So let's hit upgrade. We want it to land between these two for open field effectiveness. First one, solid as can be. There we go. Next skill. That's good. This is good. That's where we want it. All right. And we have one last skill. Wow, over a thousand universal commander sculptures. Just noticing that. Whew. All right. We'll figure out where those go soon enough. One last upgrade. We're doing it, fam. They went to places we wanted them to go. So Attila is now 5132. Not bad. Not bad. Let's take this commander out on the battlefield and see what we think. Um, my troop dispatch queue is full. I'll be right back. All right, so let's go into the field. Um, we're going to bring a peacekeeper. We'll just bring Lohar. Um, we want to kind of minimize the effect that the primary commander has on the battle so we can observe the secondary commander, which will be Attila, doing work. So we're going to grab Lohar and... We're going to snag Attila. We're going to bring Cavalry. Um, we're going to bring T4 so we can actually watch the fight for longer and kind of enjoy what's happening there. So we're going to bring them out onto the battlefield. Now, in my perfect world, we might smash some 25s. There's a 25 over here. Let's go make that happen and just kind of get a peek. At first of all, like, what does the skill even look like? We're going to notice the elevated damage over the course of the four seconds. So we're going to watch that after the skill fires off. And we'll see kind of what this looks like. Um, in general, it's interesting bringing new legendary commanders into the game because if you've had a bunch of expertise legendaries already, you're really going to feel like you're going to want to have more skills on the new commanders until they're sort of at a point where they're very usable, which is kind of weird. And even if you've got a bunch of expertise epics, like those are going to be better potentially than even a 5111 commander. So let's get a look here and see how this looks. There's Lohar's active skill, then a second of downtime, and whoa, look at that, hulking out. And then there's elevated damage for four seconds. So 2,900 damage, 2,900 damage. Now it's back down to 2,200 damage. So now we see Lohar's skill go off again. There's Attila. Wow, we're generating so much rage that like, I mean, the uptime on that is pretty impressive. This is why I feel like a Saladin 
like a salad in with Attila could be really, really good. Like really good. Let's go over here. Let's hit this. Let's see how this goes. We got another another 25. Dude, that animation is so cool. That is that reminds me of Berser going berserk from World of Warcraft. Have I mentioned that I feel like the developers get a lot of inspiration from World of Warcraft? <laughs> Have I mentioned that? So here we go. There's Lohar, second of downtime. There it is, Attila. 3,300, 3,100, 3,400, 3,400. And then we're back down to 2,200. Then it procs again, 3,400, 2,600. Oh, interesting. I wonder if a part of what's going on is we're having that other skill fire off, the fourth skill, that increases that damage dealt, which is pretty sweet. Wow. I mean, that looks cool. That looks really, really cool. Um, we're going to smash this one more level 25 barb while we're here. And then we got to go look at, like, where would we pair this commander with him as a secondary and a primary? We honestly should make a full guide for this commander, which will come in the following days as we actually experiment with them and get that um, experience with them on the battlefield. So there's that active skill again, elevating the damage to 2,900, 3,100, 3,500 normal attack damage. Pretty solid. Um, so when we think about how much the damage was elevated there, I mean, like, we're getting 4,000 extra damage from normal attacks. It looks cool, but, like, is that good? Is that good compared to just having a really high damaging active skill? How good is this really? Let's go look here. Let's, let's just look again, okay? So this active skill is increasing our normal attack and counterattack by 30%, and your normal attacks have a 50% chance to reduce enemy attack. So I guess there is reduced enemy attack that we also didn't account for there. We didn't account for that. That's also valuable. So we're doing some damage, and we're doing a debuff, and a 50% attack reduction is actually quite large. That is quite large. Um, this skill... Uh, proking for a couple seconds. I mean, we saw the damage spike up a little bit occasionally. That's definitely where that was coming from. So I still kind of question, like, okay, I know this commander is good. I, I, I see the promise of goodness here. But, you know, I'm just going to point out that a commander that does a lot of damage as a secondary could be really powerful. It's not fair to compare to an expertise legendary. It's not fair to compare to a legendary that has more skills on it. So we'll find that comparison point over the coming days, get a sense of, of what we think really good looks like there. In terms of pairings, if they're going to be the secondary commander, which might be your starting point until you've leveled them up. If I look at a commander like Tao Tao, I think they're interesting because the 25% extra attack is really, really good for also benefiting normal attacks in addition to skill attacks. Um, with that said, I don't think Tao Tao is the play here. Um, I think you would want more rage generation. Uh, and Tao Tao has some of that in the fourth skill, but not that much. So I don't think Tao Tao is it. I think a Minamoto primary is a good starting point in the short term. Uh, they're going to do a lot of damage, give you some extra attack, some mobility. I think that's all really, really great. Um, the elevated damage also seems really, really good. All damage being elevated from the fourth skill of Attila could influence um, the first skill here, which seems exceptional to me. Um, I would be sort of curious how that stacks with Warlord, or if it stacks with Warlord. We're going to have to make a video about that to figure that one out. I don't know if it would, um, or if those effects are um, identical and replace each other. That would certainly influence, let's see here, Takeda, or sorry, Attila... Is he elevating his own damage, or is he making it so the target takes extra damage? Increase his own di troops damage out. So that would stack. That would stack. That is pretty powerful. I like the Minamoto primary. That seems good to me. Continuing on, I love the idea of a Saladin primary. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I love the Rage Gen over here. That seems really strong to me. I like the defensive capabilities that you're getting over here, making you more tanky. And I like the ability to reduce the enemy's attack. I mean, everything going on here seems pretty good to me. This seems like a good pairing. I also really like 
Khan as a primary. I like Khan as a primary because he's a rage engine, which means you're going to have nearly 100% uptime. In fact, let's go for a spin. Let's take that for a spin. Let's show, let's show you nearly 100% uptime. What does that look like? What does that look like? There must be a level 25 barb nearby too. Let's find that now. Um, uh, yeah, that's close enough. It's a little little hike. little hike, but that's uh, that's fine. We'll cut this out and then come back. All right, we're on our way down. Let's just talk as this commander walks over our con with Attila um, about what some epic pairings might be. Actually, there's even some more legendary pairings we need to talk about. I mean, it could be really interesting to see a Caesar primary. Um, it could be really interesting to see Freddy paired as well. I think that could be decent. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there. In terms of epics, I think Boudica would be okay. Pelagius is the slam dunk pick here as a primary. That could be really, really good. Um, there's a rage engine on Pelagius, and uh, I, I guess there's some anti-synergy with the skill tree, come to think of it. That's really the downside of pairing with like a con, is there's some anti-synergy with the skill tree here. We're going to have to put more thought into this. We're going to have to put more thought into this. I mean, this is still going to be insane. This is going to be so insane. There's 9,500 damage. There's the hulking out boost. Woo! 11,000 and then 7,900. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's a it's 100% uptime, okay? It's nearly 100%. That's not fair to say it is 100. But that's, that's, I'm telling you, that looks real strong to me. That looks real strong. The reason I am having hesitations now with a skill tree commander primary is that you're not going to get the benefit of this here because there's no skill damage from the secondary commander. The reason I'm struggling is because there's no skill damage from the secondary commander. So a commander like Saladin becomes a more obvious pick as a primary for the synergy of those skills, I believe. Um, we'll have to test that out to actually see how it goes. We see here also like boost to active skill damage. That's not going to do anything. So I, I think I'm settling on Saladin primary as being my number one pick here. The obvious pairing that we're going to have to take for a spin as soon as we can unlock him is Takeda. We're now waiting for that wheel to show up. We'll spin Takeda to 100, migrate to our new kingdom, and then spin the wheel there to, you know, whatever the max is over the course of the next two days, because wheel events take place over three days. So I feel pretty good about that. All in all, and we'll just, we'll just hit this for funsies. All in all, I feel pretty good good about the potential for this commander. There's got to be some really strong synergy elevating damage of your other commander because the normal attack damage isn't all that impressive to me. The counter attack damage isn't all that impressive to me unless you're getting swarmed. And like they are intended to be for rallying structures. So we'll see what we think over the coming days, put out a full commander guide, do a full breakdown Really looking forward to doing that. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. More footage with Attila to come. We're tempted to just, boom, expertise him today, but have patience. Just cool. We might, we might do some more Mighty Governor action and get some more sculptures. That seems a little hasty, right? The, that's This is true. We've seen this happen before where people um, are like excited about a commander that's on the wheel, and it's tempting to go expertise them. Um even though they might show up on the wheel again, like wait until they're done with the wheel, then expertise them. Unless you're like in KVK, unless you're in Ark of Osiris League and there's an urgent need, that's a different story. Unless there's an urgent need, patience is the name of this game. We spend a lot and we still don't have every commander expertise. All right, we're going for real. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe. It means a lot to me as a content creator. And until next time, you have fun. Smashing the kingdom.